In this program, we are dealing with energy transition from uh, different perspectives. And uh, usually, when you deal with energy transition, you think in terms of technologies, you see, think in terms of economic costs and benefits, but there is always one dimension that is overlooked. This is the social dimension. And this workshop was really here to raise awareness that uh, in order to be successful, the energy transition needs to take into consideration the social or even the societal dimension of the energy transition. Um, as students of energy master programs, we were writing our thesis and doing our research about energy poverty. But then we came across a different dimension of energy poverty and we realized that it's really at the core of energy policy making. And if you want to be energy policy officers after this program, we really need to understand what energy poverty is. So um, four of us, uh, really wanted to tackle different dimensions of energy poverty uh, and then we invited you know, researchers and, and professionals from the sector uh, so that us but at the same time our classmates can be exposed to what energy poverty is and uh, how we can tackle it from, from different uh, perceptions. So for the first topic it was Emma that tackled it. It was about energy inequalities and she invited uh, two experts, uh, Lydia and Taj from Slovenia and they work for uh, Focus Association for Sustainable Growth and they really talked about how to tackle uh, energy inequalities and they really gave us a new perception about it. Energy poverty is the experience of a discomfort whether uh, in heating or more recently due to climate change also cooling your own home and feel comfortable and not at risk when you use electricity so that you do, you do it normally and not when you're on a rush. We saw today with the workshop that there are different fields involved, different kinds of expertise involved. So how do you merge all of this in identifying and completely understand the problem, like the root of the problem? Because at the beginning we thought that it was about income and then you realize that it's about energy efficiency of the house and so it creates a sort of vicious circle and it's difficult for people to go out of a situation of energy poverty. The energy transition could be here as a leverage uh, to find solutions uh, to these energy inequalities and don't forget that these energy inequalities also have an impact on the climate change uh, because of the polluting uh, system the people are using or because the buildings are not insulated enough and therefore uh, create um, uh, emissions as well. So we need to combine these environmental sustainable issues with the social dimensions and no longer th think in terms of silos but to combine, uh, to combine the approach both of the technical, economic and the social dimensions. Another aspect was about new solutions for Africa. So uh, Jeremy invited uh, Lucia, who is a senior project manager for African Green Tech, and she really showed us what concretely means to implement new solutions in a different continent uh, in order to make energy accessible for everyone. Yes, there's the SDG 7, which is the goal of ensuring energy access, uh, universal energy access by 2030. Um, however, uh, it's, it's important to not solely focus on the, the end goal and to focus on how you measure that energy access and how this, uh, like not just ele like electrifying and giving granting access, actually fosters development. Um, so it's beyond the metrics. And I think the, the presentation of my, uh, uh, like what the, my speaker, uh, the solutions, is that holistic approach of uh, giving energy, bringing like a, a mini grid, but then also creating a hub, a hub of where locals are also employed, a hub of where the small uh, companies and the medium-sized companies can also um, use this energy uh, to uh, develop their lives and also, um, you know, where there's training and stuff uh, for these vulnerable populations, those who are usually excluded. Uh, I think that's really important, you know, in, 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 in bringing about this development rather than just bringing energy. 
The third topic was energy access in India and in wider global south. So uh, Deepu invited uh, Joel Lolestek from Schneider Electric and he really presented us the, uh, the, the new solution, affordable solutions uh, for India and, and for global south. In India, our speaker uh, talked about uh, energy access in rural areas and how his company is working in this area, providing very specific, very localized and uh, affordable solutions for clean electricity. And uh, he also talked about how local population, how is it really important to uh, entrust, have a trust with local population, involves local NGOs, uh, to gain trust of the local population and give them the solutions which would help them in uh, securing a more affordable, more easier life and which will be much more, uh, which will create revenues for them in the long run, which would be, you can say, in agriculture, in their daily lives, in their running small scale businesses and small scale industries. So the uh, solutions that they propose uh, are very effective and uh, quite uh, affordable for the local population and uh, this is uh, bringing out uh, some very notable changes in their lifestyle and uh, hence uh, energy accessibility in uh, rural areas is increasing with these interventions by private companies. And the last topic was the gender. Uh, so Paula uh, invited Marielle uh, Finstra, uh, who is a PhD researcher for, uh, for gendered energy policy. And she really gave us a new perspective on how uh, energy has a, has a gender aspect and, and the policy that is tackling it has to be uh, considered of that fact. Um, energy has a gendered face. So when you're providing access or access to energy to a community, you have to consider how men and women use energy because men and women use energy in different ways and the way they access energy is also different. So one of the failures of energy policy makers is that when we are providing energy access to a community, we just think of the end goal, we are providing energy. Uh, or electricity, we are electrifying the community without thinking of the fact that ah, the men in this community use energy differently, maybe in farms, the women in developing countries are mostly in the kitchen and we have to reduce the drudgery of them, but we just provide electricity to them. So in, um, in the gender and energy nexus, if we really want to provide a sustainable access to energy for um, the citizens, we have to look at the gendered face or we have to look at the gendered impact of the energy that we are providing.